Hello and welcome to another instructional video from EGIS Associates. In this video we're going to talk about different configuration op options associated with ArcGIS Pro. We're going to make sure you know how to access those options, understand the purpose of many of the options, and then how to configure some of the most commonly used options within ArcGIS Pro. In order to access the options from within Arc Pro, the first thing you're going to do is click on the Project tab within the ribbon. This will open the project window and you can go down to the options selection in the panel on the left hand side of the window. From there you'll be able to change various options associated with ArcGIS Pro. These are grouped into two categories. You have the project category and the application category. The project category deals with options associated with the current active project. This doesn't apply to new projects, it doesn't apply to non-open projects, it only applies to your current active project. The second category, application, deals with various options that impact the current active project and any new projects you create later on. And within each one of the two categories, there's multiple subcategories with options set within each one of those. So let's take a look at some of these in a little bit more detail so you can get an idea of the different options you can set as you start working with ArcGIS Pro. So you can see here I have ArcGIS Pro open with a project. I'm going to go up here to the ribbon and click on the Project tab and then go down to the Options here in the panel on the left hand side. This is open the Options window which is resizable, so you can make it as big, as small as you need to, simply using your mouse. And you can see the two categories. There's the project category and the application category. We'll start first by looking at those options under the project category. So the first one is current settings, and this will provide you with information about the current project you have open, such as the name, which you can see here is ArcGIS Pro Demo, the location that project file happens to be saved at, and then other things such as your home folder, your default project database, as well as your default project toolbox. These items here where you see the browse button located on the right hand side, you can change by simply clicking the browse button and going to a different location. So that you could change your default project database to something other than the one originally associated with the project. Next let's go and look at units. There are multiple units that you can set within a given project. The first is distance. So anytime you use the measure tool, for example, to measure the length of something, what unit do you want it to be in? Do you want it to be in meters, kilometers, yards, U.S. feet, international feet, or statute miles? So you can set these up here. I currently have mine set to U.S. survey feet because I'm here in Georgia within the United States, and that's what we use. You can look at angular units, so measuring the, the angle between two linear features, for example. How do you want to, to do that? How do you want it to be displayed? Do you want it degrees, minutes, seconds, decimal degrees, or in radians? The default is decimal degrees. Area measurements, again, what unit do you want uh, the measure tool to use? Or the coordinate display at the bottom of the project view to show? Again, you can set these here. Location units for your coordinate display at the bottom of your view area. What units do you want it to use? Directional units, so if you're drawing new linear features or you're trying to, to push uh, when's the next point based on the direction from some other location, you can set that here, either north azimuth, south azimuth, polar, or quadrant bearing. If you work with parcel data a lot, so if you're maintaining cadastral boundaries, you probably want to set this to quadrant bearing so you can enter in measurements based off what's shown on survey plats. Below that we have page units for your layouts. What are your default units for that? Again, because I'm here in the U.S., I have mine set to inches. If you were in another country, such as, say, Australia, you might want to set it to centimeters or millimeters. For your 2D point symbols, uh, how do you want to set the sizing on those? Font point size, inches, centimeters, millimeters. Again, you make the choice there. And then lastly down here, your 3D symbols. So if you're creating a 3D scene, 
you may want to adjust this for things say you're you're showing uh, power poles and you want to show the power pole at the correct measured height you may want to change this uh, again for me because I'm in the state of Georgia in the United States I've set mine to use US survey feet because that's what we measure things here again if you're in uh, Canada or somewhere in Europe that uses the metric system you may want to change that to meters which by the way is actually the default for the application and lastly, we have tasks. So tasks are predefined processes that you've set up individual steps to complete. And if you want to track the history of those tasks as uh, users make uh, use of them, you can set this up here. So now let's go down to application options. And we'll start here with the general category under that. So this is going to impact any new projects you create as far as what will be the default database toolbox and folder which in which new projects uh, are configured with. So by default you're going to create a brand new project geodatabase and a brand new toolbox and a brand new folder for every new project you create. If however you have a default database that you want everybody using for any project they create you can go ahead and set that up here and point that to your file geodatabase or an SDE enterprise or workgroup geodatabase uh, works fine. Do remember that ArcGIS Pro does not support personal geodatabases, so you cannot make use of those within ArcGIS Pro. And the same is true of uh, toolboxes and folders. So if you have a specific toolbox you want everybody to reference that has custom models and scripts and tools you use, you can go ahead and plug that in. Uh, same as if you want all of your uh, project stored in a single folder. You can go ahead and set up default folder for that. Uh, again, you can do that. The other option we have here is dealing with your own your help system. The default is to use the online help from Esri's website. You do have the option as a separate install to set up a local help. So this is where the help files are installed on your local computer and that you can access if you don't have an internet connection. So this would be good if you've got a laptop that you're going to be taking out in the field with ArcGIS Pro that will not uh, have an internet connection. So you can set that up. And then lastly, you can kind of personalize the look of ArcGIS Pro with a theme. There's two themes currently, a light and a dark. So the light is what you see displayed here. The dark, um, everything that is white, uh, becomes black and everything that is black becomes white when we go to the dark theme. It looks very similar for those that have worked with AutoCAD to the way AutoCAD looks. Uh, so if you're comfortable with that, you can switch those there. Going on down to map and scene. These are options dealing with creating new maps in a project or new scenes in a project. So what do you want to make your default base map? When you create those, uh, when you create a new 3D scene, do you want to be a local scene or a global scene? there you can see some basic options with that. Moving on down to the navigation options. So this is a one people like to change a lot and this deals with the wheel on your mouse. So by default if you roll that scroll wheel forward it's going to zoom the map in. Uh, you can change it so it zooms out because the zoom in that's the exact opposite of what AutoCAD does and what Google Maps happens to be. So if you want to make things consistent you can change it here. That way you don't get confused when you move back and forth between those applications. Down to selection. This deals with the interactive selection tools on the um, map tab and the editing tab within the ribbon. So, you know, what do you want selected features to look like? And then the if you draw a box to select, does it have to be wholly within or only partially within? And then are you creating a new selection, adding to a selection, removing from, or selecting from current selection? So again, you make those changes here, and that deals with the selection tool or the select tool on the map tab and the edit tab within the ribbon. We'll move on down to editing. There are several good um, options you need to consider when you're working with Arc Pro. One, if you're working on a touch screen, such as a Surface Pro, for example, from Microsoft, you want to enable the touch screen for input. So you can click on the screen without having to use a mouse or a touchpad. You can enable that here. Okay. Now, scrolling down under Session, here you'll see Automatically Save Edits. ArcGIS Pro does have an autosave for your edits. This is where you go to enable that functionality. 
When you do that, you can choose between a specified time interval. So it can be every one minute, five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever you choose, or number of operations you perform, right? So after three operations, five, fault is 30, then it's automatically going to, to save. You don't have to remember to keep manually saving your edits. Okay? Notice you also have the option here to save edits when saving the project. So every time you click save to save the project, any edits you have done to the data, be it spatial or tabular edits, will also be saved. Now working with in conjunction with these are two options for confirmation uh, dialogues that'll pop up. One is for saving edits and the other is for discarding edits. So if with these enabled, which they are by default, every time you save an edit, you're going to get a, are you really sure you want to do this uh, dialog that pops up and you click uh, OK or yes to that. And if you choose to discard edits, um, again, a confirmation window will pop up. Are you really sure you want to do this? Yes, uh, I do. So if you have auto save enabled here and you have the confirm windows active, when it auto saves, it is going to ask you, to, are you sure you want to, to do that? If you have auto save enabled and you don't have that dialog enabled, then it's just going to save automatically, not ask you if you want to do it. It's just going to save based on that interval that you specified. The downside to that is that, remember, you cannot undo once you save, right? So you can only undo till the last time you saved your edits which means if you goof with an edit and it saves it, you can't undo that. So do keep that in mind when, when working with this. Going down to geoprocessing, one of the big option or a couple of options here you want to look at. So first is to allow geoprocessing tools to overwrite data sets. So if you use the buffer tool, the intersect tool, union, and so forth, those all output new data sets. Well, if you name the output the same as something that already exists, you want to allow that to be overwritten. So that's that option there. If you do a lot of statistical analysis and you want to start using R, which is a statistical uh, language, right? You can now integrate ArcGIS with that uh, R. You just have to specify the location of where that happens to, to be at to access your, your R directories. Moving on down to raster, there are several options setting uh, when using raster. So one here is, you know, your default background value. So if there is no data for a cell in a raster, how do you want it to display? Dealing also with multispectral bands, different color schemes, uh, cache for image services that you pull in. Do you want to use cache services where it's available or do you always want to use live data sets and so on? Working with CAD data. So this is computer aided drafting and or design. This is files created with AutoCAD, MicroStation, um, TurboCAD, and, and so on. Commonly used by engineers, surveyors, those types. So you can check it. So if you bring in one of those files into a map or a scene in ArcGIS Pro, do you want to have it go ahead and convert it to a geodatabase? So it just automatically does that. If you're not comfortable with working with DWGs, DXFs or DGN type file types, then you may want to enable this because it'll put it into a format you're more comfortable with. If you are comfortable with those CAD file formats, then I would not recommend doing this uh, because it could inflate your database with data that you don't need. So do keep that in mind. Display, here there are a bunch of options with display. You do need to pay attention to some of these because ArcGIS Pro uses a lot more hardware than older software products from Esri. Specifically, Arc Pro will make use of a dedicated graphics card if you have one. So with that in mind, you may need to come over here and adjust some settings depending on the hardware associated with your computer. If you don't have a dedicated graphics card with its own video memory and its own graphics processor unit, then you need to come in here and probably dial these settings down, meaning you may want to turn off anti-aliasing and text aliasing, right? Uh, reduce your render quality because your computer just may not have the resources to handle the higher level settings that come set as the default because Arc Pro really wants you to have that dedicated graphics card. If you do have a dated, dedicated graphics card, then some other things you may want to come over here and do is change your rendering engine depending on the recommendations from your manufacturer. 
uh, DirectX versus open graphics language. So you can choose those as well as make sure you enable the vertical synchronization and hardware anti-aliasing. So this will allow Arc Pro to actually really use that additional hardware that you have through that graphics card. And then lastly, local caches. So Arc Pro likes to build caches of all your maps and your scenes to improve performance and so on. But as you can um, guess, these can get pretty big, especially if you're dealing with a lot of 3D graphics, aerial photography, LiDAR point clouds, those kind of things. So you may need to come in here periodically clear out the cache. Uh, I just did that this morning. I had originally over four gigabytes and now you can see I'm down to uh, just over 500 megabytes. So, and this is where that cache happens to be stored. Not a lot of options with your layouts. Uh, going on down to metadata, this is where you can choose the style associated with your metadata if you're keeping it. Do you want to use FGDC, ISO, Esri's item description? All right, so you can do that. Uh, indexing, how often do you need to index your, your project to use the search functionality to find data, tools, and so on associated specifically with the project. Nothing really on location. Referencing, you can change your languages if you want to change from the uh, system languages. And then lastly, you can customize the interface. So by going down here, you can create your own tabs, own groups within existing tabs, um, add the tools to those tabs, and so on. So you're, you're not locked into just what Esri as predefined as the, the interface, you can customize it to your own needs through the options available here. So that's a good general overview of the options associated with ArcGIS Pro. I hope you found that in information useful. So please keep us in mind if you need any further assistance because we're here to help you really make use of the power of place right, so that you can apply geospatial technologies to really improve your business workflows, uh, your day-to-day -day operations, and, and so on. Do remember that we do uh, provide a wealth of GIS-related services from implementation and planning to systems integration, application development, strategic planning and needs assessment, Renatech services if you need additional staffing or um, need help with a specific project, and of course, training and support. So please feel free to reach out to us if we can be of any assistance. Our website is www.egisassociates.com. Feel free to give us a call at 678-710-9710 or shoot us an email at info at egisassociates.com. So once again, I hope this uh, instructional video has proven useful. If you did find it helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you'll be notified anytime we post any new content and we look forward to seeing you again in the future. Hope you have a great day.